Today, we're going to be talking about metrics driven agent development and specifically we're going to be focusing on ragas for evaluating our agents in both how well they're retrieving information and how well they're using that retrieved information when generating answers at the core of this metrics driven approach is the idea that by adding evaluation to our pipelines we can more quickly iterate on both agent and rag performance and that's what we're really going to focus on here how we apply ragas to a conversational agent via langchain so at a very high level we're going to have our agent over here okay so our agent is going to be using a claude 3 anthropic claude 3 llm so we have claude 3 it will be a xml agent and we're of course using line chain now one of the tools of our agent here is a rag tool okay so it's going to be connected to a archive data set we'll call it the search tool and that is going to be connected to obviously our, our rag pipeline so our rag pipeline we'll put this over here it's going to be consuming a query from our search tool. So this is going to be our, our query. It is going to be transforming that into an embedding using Cohere v3. So that's a embedding model. That gives us our query vector, which I'll call xq. We take that over to Pinecone, our vector database, which contains all of our pre-embedded archive papers. So I'm going to take it over here and that is going to return a set of similar or relevant contexts. So let's say we'll have three of those. They will be passed back to our search tool, which passes it back to our agent. And then our agent will need to generate a response based on you know, the, the context and also the initial query. Uh, so I'm going to just put the query here. So that would go through here. And then it's also gonna go into this bit here alongside our context. So this is the, the G in rag. This part here, the search tool is the R in rag. Okay, so retrieval and generation. Okay, so ragas evaluates both the retrieval and generation components. So we're actually going to be looking at metrics, two metrics that look at retrieval. Okay, so two metrics here, and also two metrics that look at our generation. Okay, so we have this notebook here. Again, I'm gonna leave a link to this in the description of this video and also the comments. So the first part of this notebook is setting up what I just showed you where we have the, the agent, the search tool, the retrieval pipeline, and the actual, you know, the whole rag pipeline with a conversational agent. I'm not going to go through this. I've gone through a very similar setup in a couple of other videos. So again, they'll be linked below. The one thing that is different here is that we will be using Ragas. So I'm using version 0.1 of the library here. And I'm going to come all the way down to this section here, integrating Ragas. So to integrate Ragas, as I mentioned, we are going to be evaluating the retrieval and also the generation components of our pipelines that means that the output from the retrieval component i.e the context we need to extract those in order to evaluate them so we're going to take a look at how we get those first so let's have a look at what we get in our output okay and you can see that we actually get uh, quite a lot in there so we have all of the intermediate steps here these intermediate steps are exactly what we need in order to evaluate our retrieval component the way that i got these intermediate steps is if we take a look up here there will be an argument that allows us to retrieve those so here when we're initializing our agent executor we need to set return intermediate steps equal to true that allows us to get those so once we have those we can come down and let's see, okay, we have our intermediate steps. That's the context, the retrieval part that we need for evaluation. 
And we also have our outputs, which we'll be using for evaluating the generation component. So let's jump down and see what we have for the for evaluation. Okay, there the context. Now for evaluation, we do need a particular format uh, for our data set, which you can see here. So this has actually been generated by the Ragas library, and this is something I can I can go through if there's interest in, in how we generate this. Uh, but essentially what we're looking at within this data set is we want the original question. We want what seems to be the most relevant context within our data set for answering that particular question, which is this ground truth context here. As you can see, that's quite big. comes down to here. Then we have the ground truth. This is the actual answer, okay? Like the ideal answer, essentially. Again, we can see that's pretty big. And then we have question type and episode done down here. We don't need to really go into those. And you can see in this data set, it's only, it's relatively small, but again, this was all generated by Ragas. The majority of it is pretty accurate. There are some things that are probably need a bit of work. And I would recommend if you're generating a data set or an evaluation data set with Ragas that you do go through it and you do just check things. And you'll probably find that you need to make some tweaks, but it's relatively good. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm going to iterate through all the questions that we have within this data set. So all of these, and we're going to ask those to our agent. As we go through that, we're going to return the context, the generated answer, and then the actual ground truth answer as well from our data set. Okay, so we're gonna iterate through that. This will take a little while to run, especially with Claude 3 Opus, which is a you know slightly slower model. Now I have, for the sake of keeping things a little faster, I have added a limit to the number of records we're going to go through. Uh, so we have five, you can increase that if you prefer, but just be aware you will be waiting a while. Okay, so once that has processed, we now have our, we have a data frame that contains our question, the answer to that question, and that is the generated answer, you can, you can see that here the context used so we're getting that from our intermediate steps here and also the ground truth so the ground truths are coming from here so the the ground truth that was generated that is within our evaluation data set so we have all those let's have a look at what that kind of looks like i can't show you everything it's i'm, I'm gonna expand these out later you'll, you'll see more of those so you can see question, context, answer, ground truth, and we have five of those. Uh, it's kind of all the already is there. Now what we want to do is we need to evaluate, okay? So we've pulled in all of our data here, we've generated the answers, and now we need to evaluate those answers and evaluate the context that were being used. So for that, I'm gonna be using these metrics here, and we're gonna talk through all of these. Uh, but first, we generate that, so I'm run that. And you need to be running that on our data set. So we're, we're going to be generating a, a data set object here from our data frame. And we just run evaluation uh, like this. Okay, so we pass in, we have from Ragas import evaluate. We pass in our eval data to the data set parameter. And then we pass in the metrics that we'd like to use. And then I'm just converting those results into a pandas data frame so that we can more easily uh, view them. So that is how we'd run our evaluation but now there's the the question of okay what what does all this even mean okay so we have this faithfulness answer relevancy context precision relevancy recall answer similarity answer correctness what are they let's take a look so first we have the retrieval metrics so our retrieval metrics are what we're using to evaluate this component here or uh, basically our entire retrieval pipeline over here. Now, retrieval is naturally the first step in every RAG pipeline. And so it made sense for us to focus on the retrieval metrics first. We primarily want to focus on context recall and context precision. But we need to first understand what they are measuring before diving into the metrics themselves. So the first thing that we need to understand is actual versus predicted. So the actual condition, ACOND, 
versus the predicted condition. So the actual condition is the true label of every context within our data set. That is whether it is relevant or not relevant to a particular question. So if the context is relevant to our query, we say that it is a positive, a P. If the context is irrelevant to our query, we say that it is negative, an N. Now on the predicted side, the predicted value is well, whether our RAG pipeline has returned the context or not. If the context has been returned for a particular query, it is a predicted positive, which we would write as P hat. On the other hand, if it has not been returned by our RAG pipeline for a particular query, then it is a predicted negative, which is N hat. Given these conditions, we have four possible outcomes. We have P, P hat, which is a true positive, meaning that a relevant result has been returned by our pipeline. We have n n hat, which is a true negative, meaning a truly irrelevant result was not returned by our pipeline. We have n p hat. Now that is a false positive, which is not a good thing. That means that a irrelevant result has been predicted positive, i.e. returned by our pipeline. And finally, we have P and hat, which is false negatives, meaning that a relevant result has not been returned. Again, something we don't want. So given these potential outcomes, let's see how they are used to calculate both the context recall and the context precision. We'll start with context recall, which is more broadly referred to as recall at K. Now, Recall at K calculates how many of the total relevant records within a data set have been returned by our pipeline. And we calculate it as the true positives, i.e. the relevant contexts that were retrieved, divided by the total number of relevant contexts, which we can actually calculate as the true positives plus the false negatives, which we write as P and hat. That's how we calculate the recall. Now, you may be asking what that at K means. The at K refers to the number of records that we're allowed to return. Okay, so you can imagine if we did recall at K where K is equal to one, we only have one chance of getting all of the relevant context within, you know, that one returned record, which is hard and potentially impossible if you have more than one relevant record within your data set. Whereas if we increase K up to the total number of records within your data set, it's kind of a hack, but you're actually going to get a perfect recall every single time because you're returning all of the relevant records with every single query. Obviously, you know, it's not particularly useful because we do want to be filtering down our, the number of records that we're returning if we're looking to implement RAG. But you can do that. So the point here is that a higher K value means that we're more likely to return more of the relevant results, whereas a smaller K value means we're less likely to, and it's almost more challenging for us to find a good model when we're using a small K value. By default, RAGAS uses a K value of five. So whenever we're looking at context recall here, we're looking at the recall at five value. Now, to view this metric, we're going to just have a look at our results. We're going to include the question because that is obviously used the context that were returned. We'll just see the answer. We don't actually need that for this, but it's useful to see. And we're going to look at the context recall value that was generated. We've already calculated all this when we ran at the evaluate method earlier, but yeah, you can see what we have here. So if we take a look at the context recall, we see that we get one for, okay, so Perfect for the first row, perfect second row, perfect third, fourth, and fifth row. So we actually get perfect recall. That's a good sign for our retrieval pipeline and shows that the Cohere Embed V3 model that we're using is performing very well. So let's keep going and we'll take a look at our context precision. Now context precision is a good counterbalance to recall. As I mentioned with recall, we can just increase the K value and we'll get perfect results every time. What precision does differently 
is that it's taking a look at the total number of relevant results returned divided by the total number of results returned. So we can't use that hack with precision. And because of that, we often see both precision and recall used together when evaluating retrieval pipelines. So to calculate precision, again, we're going to be looking at the total number of returned relevant results, which is PP hat, i.e. the true positives. On the denominator, we're also going to be taking true positives again. We're also looking at everything that's been returned. So we also want to be looking at the false positives, which is N P hat. So that is number of relevant contexts retrieved divided by the total number of retrieved contexts or K. And yeah, we can see our context precision there. So moving on to the generation metrics. Generation metrics are less quantitative, more qualitative. So we're using LLMs to measure most of these. The first one we're gonna look at is faithfulness. So the faithfulness metric is used to measure the factual consistency of an answer when compared to the retrieved context. A score of one means all claims in the answer can be found within the context, and this is according to an LLM, whereas a score of zero would indicate that no claims found in the answer can be found within the context. And you'd calculate the faithfulness like this, so it's the number of claims in the answer also found in the context and the number of claims in the answer. And again, this is being calculated using an LLM, so it's, there is some degree of randomness that you can expect here. So you can see here we have a mix, a mixed bag of things here. So we have faithfulness of one for the first three answers, and then for the second two, we actually have zero. Whether or not that is genuinely very accurate is something that you we sort of wanted to actually look at ourselves and judge because again we don't want to just leave this up to an LLM to say okay whether this is actually the case or not uh, but again it's something that it's good to investigate to some degree by hand okay so we have faithfulness and then the second generation metric that we want to look at is answer relevancy so this is the final metric we're looking at and it's kind of similar to our precision in that it's looking at the all of the generated output and looking at how much of that is actually relevant to the original question. And the way that this is generated is by asking an LLM to generate multiple questions based on a generated answer. And then we use cosine similarity to compare those generated questions to the original question. So naturally, if we have a concise answer that aligns well with the original question, the generated questions from that concise answer will be very much aligned to that original question in cosine similarity. Whereas if it's a kind of fluffy, not very concise answer, or it is actually not answering the original question, uh, we're going to get more chaotic generated questions that do not align to the original question. And we can see that here by printing out the answer relevancy. All of these are generally good results. In particular, the final one here does seem to actually perform very well. So there seems to even be some mismatch between the faithfulness and the answer relevancy here. Okay, so that is all we have for this introduction to Ragas and using Ragas with line chain agents. Naturally, by adding evaluation and going for a more metrics driven approach to building agents, we can iterate on our both retrieval and generation components much more quickly and more reliably. So it's definitely something that you, in most cases, should consider integrating with your existing development efforts within agents and just RAG in general. But for now, that's it for this video. So I hope all this has been useful and interesting. So thank you very much for watching and I will see you again in the next one. Bye.